Hi, my name is Patrick Webb, and in our ongoing discussion on the chemistry of plaster and heritage building, we're going to be taking a look at the natural hydraulic line cycle. So we start off with our NHL, which we discussed was a combination of calcium carbonate and uh, silicon dioxide, an active or open one. As usual, in our process of manufacturing, we add heat. Heat in the form of 1,000 degrees Celsius, about 800 degrees Fahrenheit. And that will, of course, come into the system. What leaves? This part of the cycle is the same as regular lime, CO2. All of that gets dissipated or exhausted from the limestone. The resulting material is uh, a mixture of bellites, which we discussed were calcium uh, disilicates, dicalcium silicates, excuse me, and um, calcium oxide or quicklime. As the manufacturing uh, process continues, we add uh, water, usually in the form of steam, and that goes in. And what that does is that quenches the very, very reactive uh, quick line, which is the bellite's not quite as reactive, so we add just enough to, to create the calcium hydroxides. So I'll express that here. And this is typically what we're receiving when we buy a bag of uh, natural hydraulic lime is a mixture of calcium hydroxide, the excess limestone that has not reacted uh, with the amorphous silica. All right, and this is where the cycle begins to break. This will not be returning to the natural hydraulic lime. Actually, we're going to uh, split into two directions. So when we receive this binder on our job site, we're using it to make a mortar or a plaster. Maybe we're adding sand as well, but what we care about is the chemical reaction. So we're looking at what happens when you add water. Water goes into the system, and um, as uh, the reaction that takes place with the calcium hydroxide is the same as what we're used to, so we're actually going to be forming, slowly over time, calcium carbonates. So yeah, we're recapturing at least some of that CO2. But um, a percentage of our lime, it's going to vary depending on how, how hydraulic it is, is going to form more quickly um, by reacting with calcium, disilicate, and the water to form these hydrous calcium silicate materials. And there are actually a variety of them. So the calcium that's tied up with, um, with the, those uh, type of reactions is uh, no longer free to accept the CO2 from the atmosphere. So it's a, it's a somewhat incomplete cycle. Well, uh, I want to talk just briefly about um, the different versions of NHL. You've probably heard of the terms NHL, 2 or 3.5 or 5 and uh, they're modern it's a modern standard that has to do with compressive strength and uh, it's loosely based um, on the old system which was determining how um, how hydraulic it was with water um, they used to have a feebly uh, moderately or eminently for example hydraulic lumps and uh, but now they have a more uh, scientific way of calculating it, but they more or less, uh, even though it's not strictly corresponding to that, they more or less correspond to that. So an NHL2 of lesser comp compressive strength generally is um, less hydraulic than a, a stronger uh, NHL, say a 5, that has a, has a much higher compressive strength. In other words, that compressive strength, that higher compressive strength is coming from these reactions, which means more and more of the calcium is tied up in these cementitious gels, 
and then less is available for the carbonate reaction. All right, very good. We're going to be discussing um, a similar mineral um, that's used for plaster, natural cement, in our next video.